What's up Nightwalkers? In this video today, I'm doing a follow-up on the panel bridge. The reason for this video is that I still get a lot of questions about the panel bridge and I've gotten a lot of requests to do an updated video ever since Noise Fighters released this mini rail arm. And this mini rail arm is included with every panel bridge now. And what this thing does is it allows you to mount a device with the mum rail, such as the fur breach, onto the panel bridge. Full disclosure, I work at TNVC and TNVC sells the panel bridge. However, this is my very own panel bridge that I purchased out of pocket and I've been involved with the panel bridge before I came to work at TNVC. I've been using the panel bridge now for over a year and because of that, I just wanna share with you guys some of my own personal takeaways. And so for me, you know, I don't take advantage of the panel feature all that often. Um, I do find it useful, I just don't use it that often. Uh, myself, I like this, the better optical quality of having the tubes pointed straight. And because of that, what I do is, um, if you see, you see these screws here and the screws there, I tighten them up super tight. And that way, the PVS-14s, they're not gonna, they're not gonna move on me accidentally. Uh, because if you do have them loose, you know, you do introduce more possibility to kind of knock them out of alignment. Um, and then by getting them, even if you get them in whatever position you want, you know, for the panel feature, uh, what I would do is tighten them up super tight and that way it's going to maintain that position better. A common question that I get is how durable the panel bridge is. You know, after a year of use and tightening these things down um, super tight, removing arms, putting the, you know, the mini rail arm on, back and forth, stuff like that, I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever and I expect it's going to hold up just fine. Now, when it comes to the mini rail arm, um, I really like this thing. I think it works really good. If you notice here on the back, you got two different holes um, right here, and that's for where this screw goes through here on the arm. And then the way that you swap it in, basically, it's pretty easy. All you're going to do is basically take the screw out of there and just swap in the new arm. Whenever I'm running this setup, this is the rail that I use on the breach. It's the only way I can get the breaches image to merge with the PVS-14 for me personally. Um, could be different for you. Just try out the different rails and see how it works out for you. Uh, but this is what, what works for me. Now, if you're going to be using the devices independently, you know, PVS-14 or breach in front of the eye, I would use the rail up here because it places the battery compartment at the bottom. And so you're not going to have these interference issues, which could possibly occur depending on your eye spacing. The panel bridge works really good with the head mounted thermal combination like this. Now, the one thing you got to know is that based on how you set your IPD spacing by uh, articulating the arm, uh, you're not going to get a perfectly straight border. You know, you're not going to get a, a like an actual rectangular image from the border of the screen. However, the image of the actual thermal image coming into your eye, it's going to be, it's going to stay straight regardless of the position of the device. Um, but I know that does bug some people. Uh, unfortunately, that's just a trade-off that you're going to have with any of these articulating systems with a thermal device. The pano feature actually is very useful for helping to line up the display from the breach uh, to the PVS-14 because it does allow for some movement to go inside as well as out. And I find that very useful for getting the best image of the breach uh, when I'm using it with the PVS-14. I'll share with you guys a quick tip on how I secure a lanyard to the back of the panel bridge. And so what I do is I get a piece of shock cord, you know, start with the longer length, just bend it in the middle. Feed it through the lanyard hole. You know, I, I like it through the top. You can do it through the back, however you want to do it. And then once you determine the, the length that you want based on how much tension that you want to apply to it, uh, just cut it off and tie your, tie your overhand knots as necessary so it doesn't pull through. And then you can attach your mini uh, carabiners here or your hooks uh, to this thing right here. And it's really easy to take off and it's going to pull enough tension on it where if you did accidentally hit the button on your mount, it's going to help pull it back into it as well as if it does come out now unfortunately it's going to come down and probably hit you in the face but at least it's not going to fall off your helmet to wrap up the video the pano bridge is a fantastic option to mount two pvs 14s with the option to add a thermal device that's compatible with the noise fighter's arm however to be perfectly honest with you it's not my favorite dual bridge system for mounting a thermal device with a pvs 14 and that's primarily because there's no quick detach capability on the thermal. You know, for myself, this isn't my only setup. I have a binocular system I use. I use other systems. And whenever I'm using those, I like to bring a thermal with me. And so I like the ability to quickly detach the, the breech versus having to take the screw out and all that to take it with me. And then when I want to get this, this set up up and running again, I can just plug it back in versus um, having to screw it in and out like that. Not a huge deal, but it kind of slows you down a little bit. Um, I prefer to have QD if I can. Uh, so anyways, I hope this video helped you guys out and thanks for watching.